We are back, episode 51, and we will have a special guest tonight. Brady, like would you like to lead us in with our main sponsor partnership, Love of Our Life? We just got back from an incredible episode 50 at the one and only, well, there's a few, few Moon the Golf. The one, one and only in Alabama. Yeah, the one and only in Auburn, Alabama, Moon Golf. And that is our presenting sponsor of the podcast. And there's a reason for that because they are the number one equipment for golf store in Alabama and Florida. And Florida. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we love uh, we love the Moon Golf. We had a amazing turnout, I think, for well, the uh, a lot of new new faces come. A lot of new and fans. Even, I think. Um, the winner Hampton he entered the tourney. Yeah, so he'll be there next Saturday with us. We'll see him next Saturday, and he might win another two hundred dollar gift card if he wins I the. I need uh, to text Jeremy. Jeremy said they were going to enter the tourney today. Gosh, Jeremy, get in here. We're filling up. Do you know how many teams we have right now? 28. 28. That's crazy. I honestly did not expect to get over 25. Like, I figured 25 was a really good number. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad that it's turned out that way. But um, also, Moon Golf is uh, helping us do that, put that thing on. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, they're helping us. So, we are certainly, certainly. 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 Sorry, I couldn't get that word. Certainly. <laughs> We certainly gonna keep using them. We're gonna keep sending people to them to use. Like I um this this week uh last week whenever I played we played with Connor um he said I literally uh, have my putter at Moon Golf right now. They're That's reshafting crazy. it. He said I went and got um he said he got another fitting there the week before. I want that putter fitting. I I don't know if they offer it in Auburn yet, but um I saw in Melbourne. I saw from Sarah. Mm -hmm. Uh, our other inter interview, the one I had to miss, they have the, uh, is it the Q dot? Is that the name? I know what you're talking about. I, but you do the three dots on the ball yeah. and it measures it. I want a putter fitting. I want, uh, love the look of that new LA Golf putter. Mm. But I told Johnny, I said, oh, I might need some. I don't know if my wedges are forged or not. Mm-hmm. But that term to me just means business. <laughs> when I saw the Bettinardi Forbes wedges, yeah. I was like, what other wedges? Of course, Vokies are. I was like, I never knew. I, I just started seeing the Betty uh, wedges as well. So I don't, I've never tried them. And I I'd like to see them. But another great um, acquisition that we got from Auburn is Miss Kelly Murphy, who's going to be on the show in about. 30 seconds after I give her this little rundown of all her highlights. She is from South Carolina. She went to Auburn from 2014 to 2018. Uh, she played on the women's golf to to uh, team. <laughs> Technically, her and Ann are uh, teammates. Teammates, Just yep. different years. Down the line. Which her is wild. She has a very extensive uh, highlights of – junior golf um she qualified for the 2013 u.s women's amateur so i mean she was pretty young then probably like 16 17 sure. and um then she played for team usa in 2009 and 2010 as a u.s kids golf world cup team um, she was named golf week junior player of the year uh junior player of the week in august of 2011 then she of course played for auburn women's golf from 2014 to 2018 Competed in 31 tournaments during her time on the team, and uh, she was a 2015 Byron Bryan. <laughs> Sorry, that, that <laughs> they love the same. Yeah, they, they, uh, the Bryan National Collegiate Runner-Up, 2016 Pinehurst Challenge Runner-Up, and the 2018 All Second Team. All SEC. All second. SEC Second Team. Um, and now she is the teaching professional at Moore's Mill Country Club, right down the road in Auburn, Alabama. Here she is. How early did you start playing golf, and when did you start com uh, competing in junior events? Oh, man, wild. Um, I started playing when I was five, and I got competitive when I was eight. Started when I was eight. So you're, you're originally from South Carolina, right? Yeah. Well, actually, I mean, I was born in Boston. My parents are snowbirds and retired to the south. Um, they were looking at Cape Cod in Florida, and my mom was like, what about South Carolina? And my dad was like, I love golf. Say less. So <laughs> it was a that's good, where we ended up. And yeah, that's what we did. So I kind of fell into it that way. You've got a uh, a 
pretty big list of achievements in junior golf. Do you have a uh, most memorable event or anything like that from junior golf? Oh, <laughs> um, oh my gosh. We played, I mean, South Carolina was awesome for playing junior events. Like the South Carolina Junior Golf Association was on the un- I did. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> No, you're good, man. No problem. They were unmatched in setting up junior tournaments um, for kids. Um, my actual, my favorite golf memory, though, not can I, not junior golf, but in college golf, was I played uh, the state amateur on my birthday, final round, made a hole in one. Um, but the best part was, is I was only wearing one shoe because <laughs> I had like bruised my pinky toe like earlier in the week and couldn't put a golf shoe on. So I had one shoe, one Chaco and was able to make a hole on my birthday. It was, it was, it was unmatched. So when you say favorite memory, that one just kind of jumps out like nothing topped it. And that was the best. Yeah, that would certainly be in probably my favorite memories for a lifetime. Chacos are undefeated. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just let the dogs out and breathe in. Were you, were you, uh, no sock or sock? Oh, no sock. Yeah. No okay. Sock. <laughs> I was about we, to were, say. we were going to judge you differently if you said socks. <laughs> I'd leave right now if I said sock. <laughs> you just says, okay. Oh, that was good. Start well, cutting everything off. <laughs> exactly. Um, what influenced your decision to come to Auburn over the uh, D1 schools on the East Coast? Oh, man, just our practice facilities and the coaches for sure. I was recruited by Kim Evans, um, and she had come to watch me play a lot in my junior career. Um, we Our personalities clicked. We got along really well. Um, and if you all have never seen it, the practice facilities at Auburn are absolutely unmatched. Um they provide almost every resource you can to succeed. Um, and being out there was being out there was never boring. I think we had over three or four practice greens out of the facility, different lies, different sand, different like grasses, um, all the technology in the multiple hitting bays we had. There was really no excuse like not to get better. So I've seen a little sure. Yeah, I've seen a little bit about the practice facility down there. I, I heard that like Jason Duffner did something to like the greens where there's like three or four different greens that are each grass type or different grass types or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. There are, there's three different greens down at the back. Um, one of them's the Duffner green, which was really cool. Okay. Maybe um, that's what I got it from. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, there's, we've got different, you know, sand pods to practice wedge distances to like, you can set up an entire part three course on the back of our practice facility back there. You let the UPS guy in right here, Brady. Is he, he needs to come Yeah. Okay. Oh, door's open. Uh, yeah. He got it. What's hey. going on? <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. You, you can just leave it on the table. That'd be great. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm going. Yes, you sir. Too. See you. Where are you all based out of? Valley. Okay. We're, we're doing it in uh, Casey's print shop, so <laughs> there's business coming in and out right now. <laughs> Somebody forgot nice. to lock the door. Well... Well, anybody we're, can we're live, so yeah. this is real life. No, we can cut it out, so it's good. <laughs> Do you feel like in the no, last uh, couple of years the SEC has really went all in on golf in like the last decade and started really investing and in seeing some of the better players come to the conference? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, on the men's – you see it on the men's and the women's side too. Like the men are number one in the nation right now, and they're playing amazing. But the, the East Coast – the West Coast and the Southeast have always been two of the strongest areas for collegiate golf. But, um, yeah, the, the depth in just the SEC alone um, is outstanding. And especially when we go and play uh, in other places and against other conferences, I definitely think we're one of the stronger ones out there. Um, I know a lot has changed since I played, but I think it's only been on the up. Did you like going to Tuscaloosa? It's a fan favorite for me. No, absolutely not. <laughs> we, 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 we never went and played up there, so I've still I've still never set foot. Really? So <laughs> I I went to Alabama and I get all the alumni emails and like everything they're doing, and I've I've seen Auburn's facilities just from constant following uh, the media and stuff. And Alabama did a new, it's like a golf house, very similar facility, but it just makes me think that the SEC is like all in now on golf and all the other sports. It's just 
It's a different conference compared to most of the, most of the country. Hey, man, it just means more, right? It does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I see right. that as well. Like the uh, athletics all around right now, Every everybody's trying to get like the next best thing in their facilities. Whatever it takes. <laughs> Yeah, like the new football state, like studio and here and everything. Oh my gosh! If if you drive through Auburn's campus, they're new. I think it's like the recruiting center over at the stadium, but also the new workout center and everything they have to do. It's just, man, it's crazy. When we get to go to Auburn, we are the only place we go is Moon Golf. That's where we're yeah. at. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all gonna drive through? Let me know and give you guys a tour. We will. We we're looking forward to. Uh, the the match we got prepared but we'll talk about that later well i got some notes on that i've got some notes on that later um back to uh your time at auburn what do you have like a most memorable moment uh while you're at auburn i do and you're all gonna i can catch a lot of hate for the not hate but um senior year our assistant coach and i and the juniors and seniors on the team got to go play augusta Really? So that would be, oh. we oh, did, man. yeah. That was, that. I mean, by far the best day of golf, the best day of, I mean, literally anything. The best day of life. life. Yeah. Yeah, best at life period. So outside of golf, it just happened to happen in that time frame, but I mean, it'll it'll never be topped, so. How did you play? Yeah. Did you play well that so day, just, or? I played, okay, I, I played the front nine one under. And I was from the member tees. I was super stoked. It was really foggy when we started. The fog kind of hadn't cleared. You couldn't really see too much in front of you. So it was truly like hole by hole. Then on 10, the fog started to clear. And when I walked over the hill on 11 and just saw everything untouched <laughs> without people and players, I think I blacked out. Like, <laughs> I believe that. I like three putt at 11. Like I played the next few holes rough and like, you know, finished strong and got it back. But I mean, those walking through Amen Corner just – I couldn't. I couldn't tell you what I was thinking. <laughs> All the emotions came over you. <laughs> Absolutely. I told these guys like, if we ever get a chance to do it, I don't know if I'll have like the the composure to tee off. Like, it's just, it, I don't think it would happen. I was, we were watching um, the Masters this weekend. I was trying to explain to my wife like why it's so great. I was like, it's private. You cannot buy your way on. You can't sweet talk your way on. You have to be invited, and. Um, I said, I probably won't ever get to, but if I do, <laughs> I said, just know I'm unavailable because I will be there. No Birth matter of what. a child, death, yeah. marriage, <laughs> I'm I'm not there. I'm going to be playing. My wife asked me this weekend uh, on Saturday. She was like, uh, it, it was pouring down raining, uh, you know, all day mm-hmm. Saturday there. And she said, would you? And then I just cut her off and I said, yes. And I was like, I don't even know. <laughs> what you're about to finish with but I, i'm pretty sure i know i was like i know that i would sit there through all that no matter what and she's like storm she was like yeah that's what i was gonna ask i was like yeah no there's no <laughs> doubt <laughs> absolutely I'd, I'd have been there in a heartbeat watching everything that probably would have been one of the best times to go i think because once they they kind of did the delays and sent everybody off and then made them come back and it looked like everybody was more spread out and everybody wasn't on top of each other but you yeah. just had to sit through the rain then let me find i'm not rom's finish though so strong i i enjoyed it i had you had him i picked him at yeah. the beginning of the season i was getting in the nice. year i was like he'll be number one in the world and you which, said which he got a couple of weeks ago, and I said, and he win Masters. And then last week, I was like, well, Brooks has won two of the last five he's played. I was like, I think it's his to win. And he led all the way until they restarted. You know, he was good for 54. <laughs> Post 54, he, he kind of he lost his drive, and that's usually where he's really strong. And But, I mean, it was one of them where I was fine with either one winning. Yeah. As long as it ain't P. Reed. He was coming, though. Um, or Phil. Yeah. That what, a, <laughs> what a finish by Phil at, what, 53? 54, I think. 50. I think he's 54. I wish I could play golf that good now. Uh, me too. Um, post, post Auburn, um, did you play any mini tours after college or look into turning professional at all? No, I didn't at all, honestly. I A little too much of my game was, like, my self-identity was wrapped up in my game. And I know – like, it's crazy to say, but, like, I was living and dying by 
how I played and what my scores were and like just could not separate who I was from golf. And so I kind of not ran away, but I took a little time away. I went to grad school um, and then I lied to myself and tried to work a nine to five for a little bit. Um, it's the then, worst. <laughs> <laughs> nine to five is the worst. <laughs> so it was really rough. So I eventually made it, made my way back through, um, through Andrew, our, my old assistant coach, who's now the director of instruction at Moore's. Um, I was in Auburn um, during COVID for a wedding. And he was like, you should really come back and teach golf with me. Like he's told me this since my senior year, we were on the range one day. He's always said like, you should teach golf. And I always pushed it aside. Um, And I was like, no, that's crazy. I have a job, a lease. You know, I just got put on this new team. And he was like, you're selling international travel in a pandemic. Like how much fun are you really having? I was like, you're right. Absolutely none. <laughs> um, so he put something together for me, called me back with an offer, and um, I just made the made the jump and have never looked back. So, yeah, so that, I got back into it. That was my next question: was uh, your transition to uh, Moore's Mill? Um, how what's the experience been like while you've been working there? Un- unreal. Um, I absolutely love it. It's uh, I love the opportunity to get to teach people the game. That's given me so much. Um, I get to work with adults um, pretty much in the morning. My mornings are wide open. Um, the afternoons are stacked a lot with kids. Um, I run both of the ladies' programs. We have a 101 and a 202 um, classes in the mornings. And then in the afternoons, uh, I run a three- to six-year-old program called the Mini Masters. Mm. And that's awesome as well. So I really just found my sweet spot in a couple of places that I work. And then outside of those times, um, I just teach private lessons or group lessons. So it's been awesome. When you're teaching, do you prefer someone like us that has a little knowledge of the game? Or do you want a a blank slate to start with? (laughs) Man, that's a great question. You got myself into some trouble with this one. Um, (laughs) Probably. (laughs) The... uh, I love a blank slate, someone who's never played before, but with like a bit of athletic ability. Yeah. It's really easy to get them excited. It's really easy to get them into good positions and help them get better or faster. You can give them some solid fundamentals, but it is really refreshing when you have someone who plays frequently, um, who's open-minded and coachable and just needs a clean up here and there rather than the one who comes in knows everything about their game, doesn't want to make the changes, doesn't have mm-hmm. the time to. So it's, you know, all about the person and the mindset, but it's refreshing when someone just needs a few tweaks here and there. That's us. We always need tweaks. Yeah. My driver will work this week. Next week it's the wedges. And then the next week it all falls <laughs> apart. And then you'll find a piece. And then we'll be in a competitive round. Usually we scramble a lot for our videos. And it doesn't matter yeah. if it works or not. There's no stress on it. And then we'll play solo. I'm like, oh, my drive hasn't worked. I don't. I remember this now. Yeah. I remember why I went to three wood or whatever. Yeah. And why I'm last on the swing list. <laughs> I am not putting one in play. I'm just swinging hard in case I get lucky. <laughs> when when you're out working with juniors and and like amateurs like us, um, what are a few things that you want to see? them do to succeed um while spending like the time that you have with them yeah really good question um to see them succeed like i love asking questions and seeing what they can learn through the lesson and being able to give it back to me um if you leave a lesson and can't replicate it outside of that lesson or immediately forget what we did. If I've overloaded you with too much knowledge, if we got too in the weeds on something, like that doesn't feel as successful for me. Um, So to see people get better in lessons and being able to find things that will work specifically for them that aren't overcomplicated, that they can, you know, really use and take with them to get better and better. Or like when a kid comes back the following week and they're like, they remember the phrase that I taught them. They're like, oh, driver goes in the front, got it. Or like, if you have an adult, you just give them two things, really work on and they came back and they're like, hey, I looked at those things that we wrote down in my bag, had around the other day, I pulled it out, I remembered our two things, it really helped. Like that's what I care more about is like giving you guys or giving my students the keys to be successful themselves out on the course. 
yeah i i like that I, sometimes i've felt like you can watch videos on online i mean there's a ton of ton of that out there and you can just take too much information in and you get out on the course and you're thinking about this video and then you think about this video but when you can kind of simplify it to the way you said I, I think that really makes it worth like going in and like getting hands on with someone with the knowledge that you have Nothing. I'll be honest. Nothing, nothing scares me more when someone comes in and they go, so I've watched these videos and you're like, oh, what do we need to? <laughs> oh, that, <laughs> that's us. Well, let me just here. erase your memory real quick. <laughs> yeah, let's, well, that, that doesn't pertain to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll watch Rick Shields or somebody sometimes are like, okay, when you're over the wedge, start turning it open, foot here, foot here. And then you get over the ball. You're like, which way do I put my foot? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and you start, you just go blank. You're like, I don't even know how to swing no more. Is it a full swing, a half swing? Am I trying to just punch it? And then you're in trouble. Then yeah. You're, then you're three times to get yeah. up. I did it. When you're over the ball, when when anyone's over the golf ball thinking hand, shoulders, knees, and toes, it's it's not going to be a good time. <laughs> That's when balls start flying left and right. <laughs> oh, they'll come off a hosel real quick with me. I, I did a <clears throat> excuse me. I did a um video earlier this year with our coach well <laughs> i guess he's our coach yeah <laughs> the he's the head coach at the point university and um he he's been helping me and zach and he did a lesson with mitch right i think yeah, maybe I, a long I, time ago long time ago mitch was one of those he said bring out the um gc quad i'm trying to see what numbers that got <laughs> instead of working on anything he's like yeah he i did. just want to know numbers yeah well <laughs> we, we we did actual lessons and i think that experience is really like gotten me to believe in like going and being in person with someone that knows what they're talking about who can kind of like tailor to your game and i think that's like something that what you're doing is really really helpful thanks yeah people you know people don't come i tell everyone every week like you're not going to come in the following week doing something crazy different like if i tell you it's your your wrist you're not going to come next in next week with it being something totally different. Like, I just want you to learn your misses, understand why they happen and how to get a little bit better. Yeah. That's something that a lot of people like us need to learn. Just, it's always nice. (laughs) Like when I would have the lessons with Maddox to have someone actually pick out flaws and give you ways to address them. Cause like you watch a video and it says, do this. Well, maybe I can't twist that way. I got a tight low back. I can't, my hands don't go that way naturally or something like that. It's nice when you have an actual coach to step in and say, look, do it this way. Yeah. Nope. Stop right there like this and like stop you mid swing <laughs> and slowly guide you down just so you're, Oh, and then the light comes on and then you start making some progress. Yeah. How much, uh, yeah. how much golf are you able to play right now? Oh man. Not nearly as much as I want. I'm, uh, I'm at three rounds for the year. <laughs> nice. Ooh. Yeah. That, I mean, we're, Solo rounds, we're probably right there with you. We played like two, yeah, two yeah. solo rounds. Yeah, I think right. I've I think I've played two or three solo rounds. So and the weather's been awful though around here. So it's you have to pick and choose yeah. your days. You heard that? If you're gonna play a course that's not named Moore's Mill within an hour, because I'm sure Moore's Mill is a fantastic facility from everything I've seen. I haven't been out there yet, but. Um, if you were going to play <laughs> somewhere else, where would you play in the area? Man, to be honest, since I've been here for school and now that I work here, I have rarely played – or no, I ha- I've only played one other country club outside of the Auburn bubble in Alabama. Well, I take that back, two, but not many at all. So <laughs> I'm really limited in that where, like, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell you any of the courses around, man, which is, which is crazy. I played Valley Hill in um, Huntsville and Shoal Creek oh, okay. outside of Auburn in Alabama. Yeah, Shoal Creek is supposed to be like top notch. That's where. Um, is that RTJ? Mm, is it? No, I didn't think it was. That's where. No, um, is it one of the one of the P, uh, Smiley Kaufman or somebody like that? Is a, he plays there or am I? I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Something, something good happened there. It's, yeah. it's a nice track. It's a really good track. Oh, and um, 
Farm Links. Farm Links is ah, awesome. Yeah. Oh, we've played that a yeah. couple times. Yeah. yeah. That's, that, that's certainly <laughs> like one of our, when, when we can catch a deal, we're, we're on the way up there. We're only there for winter. Wow. They told us we played the end of February. No, middle of March. Middle of March. And it was, it was the last weekend on the deal. It's four guys for 300, so 75 a person. And they said oh, if you played sweet. next weekend, it's 350 per person. Yeah. I was like, now that I played it at seventy five, I can't go. Yeah, we, anywhere I was like, else. I'll see y'all next winter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> y'all got a steal on that. That's awesome. What's? We, oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say we we actually run it three times. Yeah, because I played it twice. I played it twice. You played it twice, but it's been three separate times we found the deal, and yeah, it was just one of them. It was a nice course, long drive. Wide open. Yeah, wide open all day. <laughs> wide, yeah. <laughs> That's um, awesome. What is um what's your favorite course that you've played tournament wise or just anywhere in besides the Besides Augusta. Yeah, besides Augusta. <laughs> we have to cut that one I, off the list. Yeah, I didn't usually it's the what's your dream course besides Augusta, but you've already played it, yeah. so Yeah. <laughs> um My favorite course when I've played Probably a really good track. I grew up playing a place called um, Wood Creek Farms in Elgin, South Carolina, a really small town about 30 minutes northeast of Columbia. That was the home course I grew up on. Um, It was a Tom Fazio design and really any Fazio design I really enjoy. Um, But I grew up playing that track, you know, four or five, six times a week. And it really never got old. And to say that about a course and the way that it made me feel and part of my like junior development was just that one will always have a really special place in my heart. That's kind of how I feel about the courses around here. Like we, there's a there's a nine hole course that I pretty much grew up playing on. I'm like, it's probably the least maintained course I've ever played, but it's like one of my favorite just because I've played it so much. That's how point yeah, is. Which one feels like home, you know? Yeah, that's right. If you ever have a bad day, you're like, you shoot real high, smart. And you're like, I wouldn't do this at point. And yeah. We'll go down to point. And you're shooting <laughs> low nineties. You're like, okay, I'm back. Yeah. I'm Get your here. confidence back what's uh what's your number one course on your bucket list oh pebble beach for sure what, feel, would absolutely. you play it if it's like the 30 mile an hour wind and rain yeah, and I would full send no matter what like yeah. the, the one with the girl like in the wind and the rain about to swing like that'd be me for sure no doubt i feel like after augusta pebble beach is everybody's answer so i mean since you've already knocked one of those off yeah yeah pebble <laughs> beach is obviously the next had one for, had to go for the other you know yeah <laughs> so now that we're we've got all that stuff out of the way we get to talk about our match that we've got set um so oh, we yeah. as of right now we're not sure if zach's gonna be there yeah. for it Pen- so, pending uh baby, baby. <laughs> arrangement with what <laughs> yeah. so my wife is due with our first child uh may 27th so I'm hoping come middle of June, <laughs> yeah, she might be tired of me being at home and say, just go play. <laughs> so yeah, if not, it'll be more than likely three of us there. So we've, we've got to where we're doing, we've done a lot that are kind of mixed match now. Mm-hmm. We've done four, the full four man scramble. We've done two man, y'all done two man. Two man was tough. We did a uh, three man this past week. And uh, we're, we're kind of like two isn't enough and yeah three is like right there borderline for us and then four is usually like where we're the most competitive so four four <laughs> of us is a good day because we're so competitive together yeah yeah that, that it's a battle mentally for anyone we're playing <laughs> I, I think once you hit a bad shot or two and then there's three of us in the fairway and you're like oh this they might be better together than than i thought it really all depends yeah. on how we're getting off the tee box but because we yeah. we can kind of get everywhere else but if like usually you or mitch has us like out there yeah but if if y'all two fail then it's on me and casey and that's where it could get a little risky <laughs> <laughs> but if we do it do, do you know if we have the permissions to do it at moore's mill I do not, but if we can't, I was thinking that RTJ Lakes would be a really good alternate. Okay, I I would prefer you to pick because you would have the uh, we would like you to have the upper hand in that scenario. So totally. if you, if you oh, no. uh, 
if you can get us or you know give us a suggestion and we'll make it happen because uh okay. like we played a guy it's it'll be coming out in a couple of weeks now but we played a guy he had shot a 66 at Callaway and that's where I was like wow. well if he if he can shoot that out there let's go there like so we, yeah, I want yeah, yeah. we want to see you know wherever you think you can go the lowest where you're comfortable Sweet. And yeah ready to give us a run for our money so yeah, that'll that sounds awesome yeah so that'll be good if if not we'll have it should be three of us maybe yeah, four th- three guaranteed <laughs> yeah possible four possible four depending on depending on the baby yeah she'll be here yeah. for sure by then it's just whether or not you're tied if down she, if she's quiet her mom's like let me take her let me just take her for the day and you go golf i'm like okay Usually that might be how it goes. You never know. That's what I'm hoping for. You never know. That's all That's I awesome. got. Congrats, man. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Well, let me see. Let me work on some stuff of mine and see what I can put together, and I'll, I'll keep y'all posted. Awesome. Okay. Worst case, we would like, uh, outside of the match, we would like to uh, come to Moore's Mill and just do like an appreciation series where we just we do the drone over, okay. show highlight the course. And if we can play, that's, that's great too, but – we would like yeah. to just film it and do kind of like a, a no laying up, a random golf club, like appreciation of it. Yeah. Just to cool. get out there and see the different venues in the area. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be awesome. So I, you know, I'm really over like kind of the practice facility and the teaching and coaching side of things. And, but that would just be something for me to take to our, you know, head pro director of golf. And no, and that's fine. Yeah. And we always say, you can always look on our Instagram. We're not, tearing up anything <laughs> yeah. there, there's different no. types of youtube channels playing golf yeah we're more of the no. respectful and respectful. mature <laughs> yeah yeah. We're, yeah that's what uh that's the way to do it. yeah yeah exactly well thank you for uh thank you for your time and thank you for answering all of our questions yeah thank you guys for having me appreciate it good to yeah. finally meet y'all yeah awesome well we'll see you in june and hopefully uh we're uh, give it a battle yeah we'll have an incredible battle on our <laughs> hands Dude, I'm stoked. It'll be, I got I to gotta start practicing. It'll be good. <laughs> Me too. I need to get to the range. Yeah, I was about to say, we need to. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get a few more rounds in by then. <laughs> exactly. We back. We are back from great the interview. interview. Uh, great energy. It's always nice when you don't have to pull stuff out of the people. Like, they want to talk. Yep. They're excited about it. Yep. it. Just Now we've interviewed so many people, which I think has become our niche. Yep. It makes our job easier. Yeah, instead of just sitting here talking to each other. Yep. Because we talk in text all day anyway. But um, It's almost like we don't have anything to talk about anymore because we're just I know. texting about it so much. So me and Joni get a rule. We don't we don't text work stuff during the day mm. because um, if I tell her everything that's going on during the day at work, there's nothing to talk about when we get home. So like, not today, but tomorrow when I get off work, we'll walk the dogs, we vent, talk about work, mm-hmm. and just to like... There's probably a handful of texts in my day from Jonas like, hey, how did you sleep? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what did you take for lunch? Um, how's work? Okay, see you soon. And that's it. That's, that, it. that's our that's our day-to-day text. So you uh, can chat it up in the evening. Yeah, so we can yeah. talk in the evening over dinner and stuff. I like that. But I feel like that's us here. Yeah. Like, there's some things I don't say golf-wise. Like I, I didn't talk about uh, Zalator's micro disc Ectomy. Mm, I don't think I could pronounce that. I already uh, have a tough time saying like Byron. Cer- <laughs> certainly <laughs> Byron. <laughs> but it's stuff like that. So like when we actually all get on site, um, it's enjoyable. Yeah, no, I agree. Which makes me worry about um, me moving virtually once the baby's coming. Hopefully, it's mm, only for a couple weeks. Yeah, you'll see. You'll see Zach on the Zoom call here shortly but or, um, or riverside yeah we might swap whichever our platform. works better but there is something that we talked about a lot this weekend the masters the masters we're gonna get into hello a- friends <laughs> hello friends and welcome back and to welcome the 87th back. masters championship 87th yep so as i think the whole golf world knows about now john rom come is that dude behind. yeah he came I, sorry I, no. <laughs> a little past tense he came from behind to surpass Brooks Kepka, the uh, 54 hole golf. leader. Yeah, the, he was the 54 <laughs> hole leader. But he did not win the Masters. <laughs> John Rahm won the Masters at 12 under par. 12 under. Four stroke lead. Yep. Over 
Phil Mickelson at eight under. And also, wasn't Jordan Spieth tied? He was T2 with Jordan Spieth? No, Spieth dropped a shot on 18. Uh, Jim Nance was saying, you know, when the last time he was almost in it, he hooked his drive right here, and then he got up and he got away in bogey. And sure enough, as soon as he swung, he hooked it. Same I said, thing. oh, my gosh. I said, you jinxed him. Mm. What do you think about Kepka's round on Saturday, Sunday? I think that – Three of the top six guys being live. The show, there's still some. I think seeing him play the first three, he was back to himself. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, okay, this is real competition. This is what I'm about. Yep. And um, I think when he goes and plays next week in a regular event for live, it's not going to mean anything because he's already made his money. Yeah. They take the payout from their bonus. Right. Right. Exactly. I think if he would have if, – if if they didn't have to start, like, at 8 o'clock Sunday morning. I think he would have won. I think he would have won if they would have played, like, a regular 18-hole event, like, throughout all mm-hmm. four days. Like, if they didn't have to do all the crazy uh, – Whole, yeah, the scheduling and all that stuff. Which, I think so too. I mean, you can't you can't stop Mother Nature, but still, like, I think he would have had a better chance at holding on to that lead because I think it really screwed him up when he was finishing his third round because he was already not looking great. Yeah, and then you just had to roll right back into it. Yeah, yep. well, and I think that's one of the uh, great things about the tour being four days, like because he was 67, 68, 72, 75. Mm-hmm. So it's. You can tell Saturday got to him the back half on that Sunday yep. morning when yep. he played. I think a lot of guys, a lot of guys, twelve or thirteen holes. Yeah, they had so they uh, Brooks and John Rom played twenty nine holes on Sunday. That's a lot. Yep, especially at their level. Yep, like it would be a lot on me walking up and down the Augusta National oh, Hills. Gosh, yeah, yep. And I mean, he's he's in his thirties. He's like thirty two, so it's not so much of that but i think he didn't have the time to decompress hit the range yeah get a good meal get sleep i heard but in the same breath john rom had the same schedule so if you came off the course after playing those finishing those uh maybe like yeah 10 or 12 holes or whatever would you have went straight to the locker room got a shower changed clothes and like deducted some of your range time and then went Absolutely. back out there yeah i think a fresh start would have been more beneficial than just jumping straight back on the range trying to stay Same warm clothes. and then yeah i think if you would have came back in the clubhouse chilled out for a minute and then went back out there it would have been like a totally different mindset and you know in football uh, during super bowl halftime a lot of the quarterbacks take showers mm. change uniforms okay. change everything to to completely refresh them because yeah. you think you sit there you're thinking about um, too much. You're thinking about too much. You're sweaty. You start to get uncomfortable. Yep. Sleeves get a little too tight. Yeah. Like, oh, this is bothering me. Yep. Or anything like that. Instead of you just shower, fresh underwear, fresh socks, fresh shirt. I like that. And then go. I never thought That's about it. That's what I'm going to start doing when we play. Yeah. I'm going to hop At in. At nine, <laughs> when we make the turn. <laughs> when we make the turn, be like, give me 10 minutes, boys. I got to take a quick shower. <laughs> give me give me 10 minutes. Did you... um? see where i know you had a busy weekend this you were on a little vacay but um did you see the tree fall on 17 oh i wish it would have hit me oh man tony said you would have died i said i would have got lifelong tickets to augusta but it was three trees yeah they were like grouped together yeah oh gosh and it hit a lady a lady was on there was a slow-mo video of a lady landing between like hopping up so everybody was just covering for the augusta saying that nobody got hurt I don't think she was seriously hurt. Yeah. I think you would have to be like, I don't know, have to get something amputated for them to come out and say hurt. Yeah. Because, dude, they probably got that tree up in like 20 minutes. Or those oh, trees. Oh, yeah, it was gone. I'm sure they had the whole crew over there on it. And then they said, uh, was it you that sent the thing where they were already checking the farm, the tree farm this weekend? Uh-uh. So <laughs> I, I, didn't see I, that. I saw they were checking the tree farm. They were just going to um, replant a tree right there? No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> No, like the course, the tree farm, like oh, ZB's oh, course. Oh, oh, oh. They're already checking it for um, the trees for stability because oh, they don't want oh. that to happen on their new course. Oh wow! No, but I did not. I, see I wouldn't that. wouldn't be surprised if that's something tournaments start doing on that Sunday, Saturday before. Yeah, because I'm sure those. I mean, they said lightning hit it, but I don't think lightning would take down three like that. When I um when I went to, I'm pretty sure it was like three or four years ago. 
when I went to East Lake. Mm-hmm. Um, it was I don't remember if it was the day we were up there, if it was the next day, because I always the only two times I've been, I've been on Saturdays, and one time I went, there was a um, like a kind of like a storm that kind of brewed up, and we left before the storm actually came in, but the tournament was or the round was still happening. They were getting towards the end of it, and uh, while we were going home. I got like an update on my phone from the PGA Tour saying that like lightning had struck a tree and like severely injured like two people. And I was like, bro, we were just there. <laughs> let, let that happen to me at Augusta. Yeah. I just want tickets and I just, want a round. Yeah. Give me, at give least, me, let me be in that practice round on Tuesday. That You can answer that. I've got a good drop zone question for us um, for later. So um, oh, the, the, the last thing I want to talk about we can discuss for Augusta was um, – so on Saturday, we obviously know it was a absolute pouring down rain. Um, would you have like if you got the chance to play it, and it was raining like that all day, you'd be doing it? Absolutely, especially because they got caddies. Mm-hmm. I think I would do um, what Sam Bennett did. He said after his round Friday, he said he had to go to uh, Dick's and get more <laughs> clothes, that. which yeah. is a wild at yeah. his level. Yeah. But absolutely, I think come prepared next time, buddy. <laughs> depending on how hard it's raining, because it may not be I mean, enjoyable. Were, it it was at one point. I mean, when they stopped play, it was raining so hard that like, I mean, you couldn't see you them with the cameras. See, yeah, hardly. the cameras could barely pick them I, up. It I was think it ruined your imagery, like in yeah. your mind about Augusta if you played it with that. Yeah. But if that's your only chance, like I'm if going they until told they tell you, me to stop. Exactly. Yeah. They say, Brady, you can play it's pouring cats and dogs, all that. You're going to be soaking wet. You're going to lose clubs slipping out of your hands. Your socks are going to be soaked. <laughs> you might not wear socks. You'll have to get them, uh, you Just know, wear them boots. Choco Golf, I golf wear those. shoes, the sandals. Yeah, I wear those boots. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You can play, or, or you're never, never going to play it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going. You have to. <laughs> you have to. It may it's ruin like the Pebble Beach thoughts. question. Yeah. Pebble Beach. I've seen videos of that, and they say it's $800 a tea time. Yeah. Per person. Yeah. I don't doubt and, it. And I've seen, and you have to make it like months in advance. Mm-hmm. And I've seen people stand on that par three with a driver because of the wind blowing 50 miles an hour at them. <laughs> I think I would. Was it that, it's like a 140-yard par three, I think. Downhill. I just had to charge it back on the Amex. Yeah. Please give me my money. <laughs> With that being over, the first major of the year is completed. So next week is the um, RBC Heritage at Harbortown Golf Links. I almost had a chance to play that, but we had to change our schedule last year. Oh, when you were going? Yeah, we were planning on going, and I had to. We had to make quick arrangements to detour out of there because there was a hurricane coming. <laughs> But uh, weather, yeah, <laughs> weather ruins everything. One person, oh well, yeah. So our we're gonna do our BSG fantasy picks presented by Primo Golf Apparel. I've got the belt on right now. No, sh- no shorts for me today. Those look like Primos, but I can I can tell they're not because they're not tapered at the bottom. No, these. So I'm scared to wear them to work. Yeah, just because they're so short. Yeah, I think they, they fit fine and look fine. But I think once I wear ankle socks with it, it's too noticeable that they're yeah. not pants. Yeah. And my boss has already said something before when I wore, which now we're business casual. Yeah. So I can wear that. This is what I wore to work. Um, we're just going to do, uh, um, we'll just do our winners or pick pick who we're going to. I need to see who's in the field. It's it's everybody. Everybody except Rory. Rory and, and Zalatoris. And Zalatoris. <laughs> Rory uh, with Drew. And while you're doing that, I'll tell this. Um, I, I don't know how many people have kept up with, like, these um, elevated designated events, but there there's 12 of them this year. And the PGA Tour will only allow you one missed designated event. And Rory really? has already missed one. He, he did not go to um, Kapalua this oh, the yeah, beginning yeah. of the year. Mm-hmm. He missed that one. So – um, I read today that I th- one of the uh, – Kyle Porter, I think, he he tweeted that the penalty for missing a, another, you know, a designated event after you've already missed one is it gets deducted off their PIP, the PIP. Uh, so that money, somehow or another, he'll get deducted a certain amount of money. I don't know what the percentage is, but – I got my pick. All right. 
You go for it. Sahith Tagala. To win? To win. Okay. He was so good. He played really well. He played so good. That's, I, that's, I'm glad you pronounced his name right. Oh, I I always tell you, people, even at work now, they'll say, how did you figure out how to pronounce my name? When I went to UAB, there were so many international students mm. I uh, dealt with as an RA. I would always make it my mission to be able to pronounce people's name right. Yeah. Even Jim Nance was getting it wrong. Was <laughs> he? Yeah. He called, I forgot what he called him, but it, it was something like not even close. Probably like Sabbath. <laughs> Sabbath. <laughs> so I was uh, indecisive on who I was going to pick. I really haven't pulled it up. I had a few in mind. Casey which, picked Tommy Fleetwood, which is going to be very disappointing because he is, and that's what he said in the chat. He said he has yet to win on tour, yeah. which is something that's crazy to me. Yeah, to well, even he, think. he's won a lot of. A lot of uh, European tour stuff. But not the one that matters. That is true. The one in the PGA. We're 2-0 and in World Wars. <laughs> Nobody else can say that. For a reason. Um, hang on. Why are we not picking up my... Oh, here we go. Wait. I picked these already. Oh, no. They're not here. But anyways. You knew that? No, I remember who I was going to pick. Uh, I'm going to go with the captain, Max Homa. I thought you were going to say Reed. I oh, like, no. Well, he's Captain America. Not anymore. He might be <laughs> Captain Arabia. Homa played good. Um, yeah. He could tell he was a little sad at the outcome. But um, I feel like Augusta. I think he had too much weight on his shoulders. Augusta is a heavy course. Mm-hmm. Just like Bryson, when he played, as before he went bulk, he played well. Yep. He finished like top 25. Or something similar. Not great, but... Oh, his stats since he's... Since he said Augusta's par 67, it was like putting his foot in his mouth. He has not played well there. He hasn't finished inside the top 25, no, I don't, I don't he, believe. They said he's like 69 over yeah. in his last over. <laughs> I was like, shoot, that's, he's one of wild. us? Yeah, that's wild. Well, we can get into the uh, drop zone if you want to. Presented to you by Warlord Men's Grooming Essentials. I put in the... Uh, the pomade on for yesterday, Easter Sunday, had a little uh, slick back going. Oh, I seen it. Yeah, it, it was it slick. Was nice. It looked greasy, honestly, but I like, that was just because of the sun. Yeah. The sun was hitting it in a funny way. I've been rocking the – so I ordered two bottles a couple weeks ago, and they sent me someone else's order. Mm. So I reached out to them. That's it. Is that the second time that's happened? No, this is the oh, first okay. time. It's still the same bottle, still using – but they sent me Southern Tobacco, which traditionally I don't like. But I've been wearing it, and I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, this is so nice. So I got like four bottles yeah. right now. But uh, I don't know what the uh, what flavor the pomade is, but I got it on my hands. Would you it know. be flavor or scent? I guess scent. I mean, it could <laughs> I, be flavor if you're like if you, tasting it. I always, <laughs> so when we go to like Bath & Body, I'm like, what flavor is this? Kind? She says scent. Yeah. You're not going to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to eat it, it's flavor. But it is natural. It's all natural. So yeah. you, you can taste it. I had whatever scent the pomade is on my hand and i could smell it all day and i just kept like kind of rubbing my hand across mm-hmm. my nose and i was like joni told me really she's nice. like you smell like your truck so what are you trying to say yeah. she said your beard oil because i forgot i have the southern tobacco if you just want to smell it all the time that's the best thing to do is to oh, order yeah. all the air fresheners i wish i could like refresh it mm-hmm. but warlord men's grooming essentials locally owned and operated by Favorite, one of our favorite veterans, Bud Hadley, down in Mobile, Alabama. If you want to get your beer looking right and no more of those dandruff flakes from your beer. Oh, gosh. I know about those. I've gotten rid of them. Yep. I told Joni, I said, since I started doing that, my mustache doesn't have them. My yep. eyebrows don't have them. Unless you're just on purpose trying to scratch skin. And use that code BSG15. For at, 15% off. At checkout. All right. Drop zone time. Um, would you rather play five rounds at Augusta, which is pretty, pretty tough, pretty significant, pretty significant, but would you rather also play five rounds with Tiger Woods? Current Tiger? I was thinking that. I was thinking that. I was thinking maybe like. I felt bad watching him this weekend. Maybe like 2019 Tiger (laughs) when he's still walking around pretty good and playing really well. Where are we playing? Anywhere he can get on at, which he can get on anywhere. anywhere. He, he might can get you on I'm, at Augusta. <laughs> so I'm playing the majors with with Tiger. Yeah, We're going to play Augusta. 
Okay. We're going to... We're gonna, uh, St. Andrews. St. Andrews is going to fly across. Uh, U.S. Open. It rotates, right? Yeah. I mean, they pick all different... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to play... Uh, what's the course up in... Uh, is it Michigan? Where they play the Ryder Cup? Oh, that was in Wisconsin. Wisconsin, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Um, Whistling Straits. Whistling Straits, yeah. And then we're going to play Pebble Beach. So that's... That's four. I guess... That's four. Or... Yeah, that was four. Augusta, the op- the Scottish St. Open. St. Andrews. St. Andrews. Whistling Straits, Pebble. And then for the final, we're going to play his course from the Tiger Tees. <laughs> oh, uh, Big Cedar? Yeah. Paynes Valley? Yeah. Can, oh, Mitch said Colin Morikawa for oh, okay for his pick. Mm, but nice. I, I would play with Tiger. Yeah. I don't care about it. So Augusta's great, but it's to the point now, like I told Joni, obviously I would love to play it. But it's like I'd love to win the lottery. Yeah, they're both lottery items. Yeah. So if I could play with Tiger, even now, because he would ride in a car, he'd still be. I think. Fun. Yeah, I think even now you could just ride in a cart with him. I, I would play like any of the courses in Florida with him, like the Medalist course. You could play uh, the Grove, uh, MJ's place. Oh yeah, Slaughterhouse. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Slaughterhouse Twenty Three. <laughs> you could play that. Uh, yeah, medalist, all those ones that he's a part of down there. Um, I, Bay Hill, all that good stuff. I mean, there's plenty of courses down there that you could pick and choose from. Which I don't know how often he's going to those places, but I'm sure, like if you if you had the opportunity to be like, hey, Mr. Tiger Woods, uh, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Eldrick Woods, yeah. the second. <laughs> We're playing five rounds together right now, and uh, you got to pick the courses. So I think he'd be like, yeah, let's oh, yeah. switch he it would, up. He would pick fantastic tracks. Yeah. Which would you do? Which courses? No, which option? Oh, definitely uh, the tiger. tiger. I, I was thinking Ti- tiger is one of them things. It's like, now what if it was uh, speed? Yeah, that should be the alternative. Like, yeah. Oh, P. Reed. <laughs> I think I think so you could play Augusta with P. Reed oh. once, or you could play any five courses in the world, but not Augusta. Not Augusta. Something like that. Yeah, that would be. Well, maybe next week we'll discuss that. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll, have to, we'll have to bring P. Reed and some other Man, unlikables it, in. It, it depends. I guess it depends on the courses. Cause like I would, <laughs> I might do the I might do the the other courses just because I could go overseas and play a bunch of courses. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Patrick Reed. No, Captain America. <laughs> He's not Captain America anymore. I'm I'm dethroning him of that title. Well. That was a good Give episode. Give me Tiger. Give me Tiger. Seven that was a good episode. A week. Yeah, I'm, I picked Tiger when I was typing the question up. So, it's one of them. It's in your head. It's like, it's Tiger. It is. I told Joni, I was like, I felt like I remember watching Tiger play, and, and like you don't appreciate it when it's happening. Yeah, it's always so, afterwards looking back on it. Mm-hmm, sort of like Kobe. Like yeah. I grew up watching Kobe, and every time you throw something in the trash can, Kobe, I was like, you know, out of all the celebrities that have died. The other one, I was like, no, that's that's part of me. Mm-hmm. That's I was Kobe. I remember when it happened, I was like, I was uh, actually, I think I was like cleaning the house or something like that's that. What it, we were it, doing. it was like a, it was like a Sunday, wasn't it? I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure it was on a Sunday. And it was just cleaning day for us, and we were cleaning the house. I had my AirPods in, and Bailey like tapped me on the shoulder. She showed me the the screenshot of like Ugh. the helicopter crash, and I. I just kind of went back to cleaning, and I was like, I just thought about it for like the next like rest of the day. I was like, bro, that's insane. Like I couldn't not think about it. I, so I watched him earlier that week. He was on an interview with somebody, and then we're cleaning. And we went to church. We ate. We're cleaning. It might have been Saturday. It was either Saturday. No, it was on the weekend. But we were cleaning, and Johnny's parents come over. Johnny's like, "Do you see Kobe died?" Kobe who? I just seen him this week. Yeah. Like he's a friend. Yeah. Like I, I just seen him this week. Yeah. He said, Brian, I said, you're lying. And I looked it up, and I guess, you know, sometimes you're on your phone a lot and you see stuff, and then mm-hmm. sometimes you're busy and you don't. And we were cleaning it, so I said, no, Kobe. And then I saw the autopsy and everything. I was like, oh, this is terrible. I couldn't imagine, like, being in a plane like that and knowing – and when they did the interview with one of the girls, they're like, Kobe was a girl dad. Yeah. And they're like, the toughest thing as a parent would be knowing the helicopter is about to crash and you can't protect your child. Because mm-hmm. like him and Gina. I was like, no. And I told John, I was like, I don't want to be a girl dad. 
and I'm about to be. <laughs> but it's in a different sense. But it's one of them. It's like you get real for a second. You're like, oh man, that's that's terrible. Yep. I, I couldn't imagine like not being able to protect Joni from something like that. Yep. I I feel the same way. And then you're like, this is tough. You start getting a little tear in the eye. You're like, oh my gosh, what would I do? I I kind of. I think I think that was something that I thought about the rest of the day. Like, what if what if like that was something? What if I was in his shoes or or his family's shoes? Like, yeah, it would be terrible. Be a part of that. Yeah. And then the sheriffs took all the pictures of him and stuff. Mm, I didn't see that. I don't want to see that. Well, he, no, it didn't come out. They were just taking keeping all their personal stuff, sharing with their friends. Mm. And uh, Vanessa sued him and won like a hundred million mm. from L.A. County. Sounds like some. Tiger Woods stuff. Yeah. Oh mm. gosh, like when he wrecked. I was yeah. like, no, he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> I I just knew he was gonna be gone. I just want to be the tiger. Get a chauffeur. That man shouldn't be driving. Yeah. But anyways, that's the end of episode fifty <laughs> fifty one. <laughs> Got a little real at the end. Got a little uh, real. Like, subscribe, follow the classics next Saturday. Sign up now if you have not already. Jeremy Clay. Jeremy Clay, we're you. calling you out. Philip Bean. We need some more. I wouldn't mind getting a thirty. Yeah, 30, 30 is, 30 is a big number. 30, 30 is a big number. It sets us up for success for classic number two. Details will be announced soon. See you Saturday, guys. Peace.